think I actually detect something that I would recommend against because you're talking about rotating an object in your head, right? That kind of is, tr is triggering me a little bit because it, it seems to me like that's sort of like the visual library, this whole like kind of, it's part of the, the culture a little bit. Like, there, But this idea that with enough drilling in practice, you can just sort of draw anything and turn it in your head. That's not actually how it's done. If you want to be able to turn an object any way you want, it's not actually a matter of sketching a lot. It's a matter of having ortho views of the object. But what you really want, a uh, side on view of, of the actual object. So basically we're saying that from here to here, it does this. And then from here, it actually goes back. Then this comes up. Let's do, I'm just gonna make it a little taller for the moment. And then is this arm breaking the profile? Probably is. So let's just make this straight to begin with Then put a little belly and then put the arm and then the leg. I'm just doing this quickly just to demonstrate for you. And then this is going to be the body of the fan, and then it come maybe it maybe it uh, bevels here, comes back. Then between here and here, this is going to be ear number one, and this is going to be ear number two. If you do this, that is all you need to be able to pose it in any in any way. So I don't like the I don't I don't know if you were thinking of it that way, but if you're thinking of like this visual library thing. I think a lot of that is like things people think about what they need to master. That's not really what they need to master. And I think a lot of that is maybe can get in the way a little bit. So, so if you really want to be able to do this kind of thing really precisely, step one is what is the design? What's like the orthographic design of the object you're doing? And then after that, cause look, cause then from here we can say, uh, okay, well let's say for example, the halfway point between here and here, is here, let's say. We can take measurements off of here, but it's very hard if we're only seeing it in uh, perspective, right? So your goal is actually to remove the perspective. And then once you have this, you can actually do, once you have the first view, it actually makes it way easier to do the next view because you can bring the lines over like this, right? And so this is actually how I recommend you start thinking if, if that's really the goal of what you want. Does that make sense? Start doing orthographics and then from imagination even, try drawing it. Or not from imagination, what I mean is not looking at the object, just looking at your orthos. So just looking at these, try doing it in different poses and then maybe check the real thing against that. If you get good at thinking this way, you'll be able to draw anything as long as you can figure out the pattern and this will help you actually practice reverse engineering the pattern. So if you have the real object, you could literally take like a tape measure or something, you could measure, well, how far is this? Oh, this is, uh, you know, six centimeters. And then how wide is this? Okay, well, this is uh, three centimeters. Do you see what I mean? That, that would be the way if you really want that ability to kind of draw any designed object any way you want. This is the, this is the, the time honored way to do that. Well, drawing, drawing from observation is going to help your overall drawing skills, right? But the only thing that, the only reason I, I explained this part is because you started talking about being able to rotate things. And because it's, it's a cute kind of a design, I'm sort of thinking that maybe you're thinking that you could apply that to like characters, maybe that kind of thinking. Yeah. So my advice stands basically because character designs are, um, they are, orthographic designs, right? That's where like model sheets, for example, for characters. And this is actually the, this is really the foundation of design are proportional grids and orthographics. So this is actually the foundation of all kinds of design throughout art history. It's, it's not a problem that can be totally solved by sketching. I know that, I know, I know why you're getting that advice and I, I think it's partially true, but that's not gonna get you all the way there. You actually need to start coming up with a way to design, to design whatever it, the object or the character or whatever it is, right? And to design it with symmetry. 
in relation to some kind of a, of a orthographic design. And then, what, and then what that allows you to do, because look, you're, you're just doing that object because you have it, right? But if you wanted to design something like that, this is actually how you do it. You don't design it in 3D. You design it in this orthographic kind of a way of thinking. Do you see what I'm doing here? And then once you have that, then you can pose it. So it's just like auto design or, or designing objects or designing costume to some, uh, to some degree. Does that make sense? We want to design it orthographically and then we want to show it off. You know what I mean? But the actual design happens like this. You wouldn't want to design something like this. Although some kinds of industrial sketching, uh, some parts of industrial design are like this, right? Um, somebody will do like a really rough, that's where, that's where dynamic sketching class comes from. And that's where a lot of the sketching trends that are, that look like this, they come from industrial design sketching. But the thing about industrial design sketching is that the person who does this industrial design sketch, they then pass it over to a 3d modeler or somebody who is going to really figure it out. But if you don't have somebody to give it to you, you're, you're, you're the one that's got to figure it out and design happens orthographically. This thing would have certainly been designed orth orthographically originally. So if you really want to be able to master that skill set, start, start thinking of orthographics, start thinking of model sheets, start, uh, you could practice this by starting with like uh, ancient vases or chalices or cups or d like designs, like goldsmith designs um, to get more familiar with this. But it's actually, it's similar between architecture and traditional art and character design and model sheets, they all have this similarity in which they are orthographic. This lets you really design it. And then when you, when you pose it into 3D, it'll look really fantastic. Okay, so uh, what you can do, there's different ways to do this. You can draw it from the front view and then the side view. By, so to do the side view, you could just carry these over. Do you see that? And then you would draw the side view, right? To do a, a, a rear view, you can just trace this. Um, or copy it if you're working digitally. So you could do, so to do the rear view, you can copy it. And then in the rear view, you keep, you keep the silhouette. So let's say this is our rear view. You keep the silhouette, but what changes is all of the overlaps are going to change. So if there's an overlap in one direction, that will be reversed, but the actual silhouette will remain the same. And so you actually have a really good starting point for the rear view, right? Do you see what I'm doing? And then maybe in this case, the hair is like this. And maybe in this case, the robes come up here and they're doing something like this. And then maybe they're hanging down. And then we're seeing something like that. Do you see what I'm doing? So the front and rear views are, are the easiest, right? The side view, you just have to figure out how deep everything is going, kind of like what I was doing here. You can also do a top view, uh, which is helpful. So you, you run these lines up, right? And this gives you the widths that you would want for a top view. And then if you've got the side view here, whatever it's doing, you could also run these up this way. And if you have a 45 degree angle, when they hit this angle, they then will turn 90 degrees and go like this. And then this is going to give you the depth and the width for your top view. So you can make as many of these views as you want. Okay. So if you wanted to do it like a box, kind of like you're doing here, then all you need to know is what are the dimensions of the box, right? So you're like, so you could just sort of measure it off. You're like, okay, this is one part that's two. So maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it's a part and then a, maybe it's like a half, right? So maybe it's like, this is one, this is two, and this is three, right? So it's three parts tall, right? And then it's two parts wide. And then if I look at my side view, I could say, oh, and it's actually only one and a half parts deep. Well, then in your perspective, this is just one, there's many ways to go from your orthographic. You can make, a, there's many ways to go from your orthographics to a final. You can make a clay model. You could... There's old ways that I've studied that people don't really use anymore where you don't even need perspective. There's lots of ways to do it. 
Um, but you could come up with like the dimensions of the box and then you know you need to do a box that is that is two parts y, two parts by 1.5 by 3, right? And then you could actually mark off these. Okay, so after so there's one third, there's a second third, and then there's this line here. And then this line is going to correspond to where the arm is. So you could basically use this grid that you're using to design it. You could build that in 3D and then sort of just sort of plot it, right? Or imagine it inside a little prism. Or what you could do is you could use like a stick figure. So let's say that, okay, this is my center stick here. And then the stick here comes out this wide. And then here it comes out this wide. And then you could do a stick in 3D space, and then it's this wide, and then it's this wide, and then you could turn that into 3D. Do you see what I mean? So there's there's lots of ways to do it, but if you don't know what the design is of the object, it's arguably impossible to pose it. Like you have to learn what the proportional relationships and what the design is. So like here, for example, this part steps back, but from this view, that's not obvious at all right? I would have never assumed that looking at this view. So an, the only way to make sure that this is going and tucking under properly, like we talked about, would be to know that. And so in some ways, un, until you do the orthographics, you're a little bit flying blind. So you can still use the same kinds of drawing techniques you're using, any of them really, but having the ortho and then referring to that as you work, that will make it come out way better and that will allow you to design wild stuff. Sketching like this is still really good practice and it's really useful, but you have if you're talking about designing objects and you want them to be faithful in 3D, it's not about doing this 10,000 times. It's actually about getting serious about what the design of the object is, if that makes sense. You're welcome.